this incredible world that when you can control your little universe and you have all that together and you 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 are somehow the king and the the, the person which can rule and and bring that into a perfection and that that myth that mythical uh, energy came to me very early when I was probably was seven eight years old and from that moment on I was very clear I had to become a watchmaker I'm the third generation watchmaker my grandfather worked at IWC um, he was a uh, working in an atelier there with several watchmakers. So my father actually then also became interested in that, but for him it was more into clocks. He was actually, and still today, he works and restores old clocks. This is his world. And I somehow myself moved back from the clocks into the watches. That was for me uh, more attracting because the the fine uh, motoric, the fine mechanic of watches was for me just an enigma, which was to me something I had to figure out. I met Martin the first time when I visited my cousin in the Kunstschule in Luzern, but this is now like 35 years ago. My cousin actually visited the Kunstschule together with Martin Frey, and this is where they met, and then they, had, they organized a party, and I joined this party with my brother, and we had a good time together, and actually, finally, at the end of the ev evening, we came closer to Martin, and, and because he likes watches, and uh, I, I'm a watchmaker, and I come from there. And I was at that time, uh, in my artwork, I was quite busy with things that circled around time. I was editing film and also sculptures that somehow are connected to time. And so it, uh, we had the common ground. We had the common ground to talk about uh, things. Of course, they came from a very different side, looking at time uh, from a very different angle. It wasn't actually so difficult in watchmaking to know that it has to open up. And so I was very glad to have these discussions with Martin and my cousin, which are coming from the art scene, and somehow to combine these open visions um, to traditional watchmaking and to, to bring these worlds together. It was just a logical, mathematical calculation that it has to work one day, but we had to insist. How do I create, how do I start to, to think about a creation of a new watches? Um, it's, it's related to, to, to all my life, you know, to all my life. I'm a curious person. I look to any machine, any video recorder, any a motorcycle. It can be a car, it can be an airplane. And for sure, on the other side, I have my education with my father, the clocks, the history. Then there's a third world of, of my mother, which is interested into music, into modern art. And this is actually very important to me because it brings me to the present time. The modern art, architecture, music from today is for me very important, is very inspiring. So when you see all these elements together, it doesn't allow me to continue the establishment which is already created in the to watchmaking. Uh, let's say a tourbillon, a minute repeater, these kinds of complications for me are done since 200 years in a very perfect way. Still today there are watchmakers, they do that perfectly well. So I don't have to be another one doing one of these existing complications. For me, it's important to bring new emotions, new passions into watchmaking. As kids, you know, we learn to read the time. So you have this, it's almost like a logo imprinted in, on your mind, you know, how to read the time, it's something very clear. And if it looks different, you know, you're puzzled. But then it doesn't take a lot. You don't have to calculate or so. You just see very quickly, oh, that's actually how it works. And then it's a surprise, you know. And the good thing from the design side was that I learned pretty quickly after the first drawings uh, that you could use like lots of the the, the space that you normally use um, on a regular watch, you could use that space to do differently. You can actually reorganize the, the geometry on the, on the case. He has a passion and myself, I have a passion 
for the mechanical uh, motions, fi fine motoric, uh, fine motions. So to, 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 to translate, to have somehow a robotic time-telling machine on your wrist. And this is something we started to exchange in the very early days, and we had a lot of fun with that. And then we just said, okay, uh, we have to do a prototype. I just finished my watchmaking school, so we had some basic machines, Shaoblin 102, Asiera F2. Um, these are basic machines. You can produce almost all the parts you need. You need a lot of time, but when you have the passion, you have the time. And this brought us to finish the first prototypes in 97, and we exposed them in Basel. And uh, we had immediately people who were absolutely engaged and we had actually lovers and haters. And this is exactly what you need to start. We started with this different time indication. That was actually foundational. Once we decided, okay, that's it, that, that's what we are going to do, that's what we're going to try as a, a, to, to, to work with this different time indication and, and create a, a watch that somehow displays this and works with it. And I thought it has to be as minimal as possible, only showing the time, that gap or that cut into the case, you know, where you see the, that our uh, satellite moving. It's actually that that started it. It's very important that we stay true of what we are. You just have to express yourself and somehow mirror your education, your passions, your, your love. Uh, with, 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 with what you know and you mix that together and then it comes out and, and it, it, can, it can disturb. But that's, that's the reason, that's the reason of creation. And then we came up in 2003 with a new three-dimensional robotic way of telling time, uh, a satellite indication which is the hours are, are are on a satellite, on a three-dimensional satellite, and showing to the minutes. And on the back side of that watch, we had a control board. On that control board, you had fine-tuning, you had uh, the fine-tuning, the power reserve, a possibility to actually regulate from the outside the, the beat of the frequency of the balance wheel. So this is a, a very old idea, which comes from the pocket watches from Abraham Louis Brugge, which I learned in the history with my father. I brought into watches of today in, we call it fine tuning. Actually, it's a possibility where you can interact with your watch. And so it was a game changer. You can even say f wider for the industry, it started a new, a new direction. For me, it's, it's clear, it has to be like contemporary art. It has to be uh, avant-garde whenever you do something, to, to make it an experiment. Everything has to be something that, that you learn something from. But what we do with Urbeck, we have this kind of uh, evolutionary process. Because I, as a designer, and Felix, as the watchmaker, we, we work so closely together, we can both somehow steer the whole thing and go the way where we want. And so it's like one step after the other. All the new watches, they actually include the previous watches. It's kind of an evolutionary process. You can recognize in Urwerk, already the name Urwerk is a super unconventional, uncommercial name. So that says to you actually nothing is shouting to any people out there, just, you know, we, we want to be like this or like that, so we are who we are. And uh, at Urwerk, you, you, you do not have any marketing. You do. You just have our expression of our feelings and of our how we interpret uh, watchmaking. And I think you can feel that. You can feel that the motivations are not driven by any um, I don't know financial ideas or power ideas or you know grow a company to like two thousand people ideas. Uh, it's, it's driven to bring watchmaking further and to express watchmaking truly today. Mm -hmm.